Hello, everybody. Welcome to Clutch's Corner. Let's go ahead and get right on into it. So first thing for uh, the smaller cap tickers out there is looking back at gold, who did gap down from the fail to that we were looking at yesterday, but it is still giving the fail to energy. So it looks like buyers are still trying to push this up. We'll see if it happens. If it does, then we do have these price targets that we can go and test out. Um, first one being at the top of this one. Now, the reason why I'm choosing this is because you can see that here we're rejecting it to the top side we can't get above it but then over here we can't get below it so this is going to be an important algorithm for us to go and test out then we're going to test this one right here which you can sort of see the same thing is happening over here where we're having trouble getting below it we're having trouble getting below it over here as well and then of course the top of this candle right here this two where all of this is having trouble getting above it after that, because of range, we could test out the top of this failed two right here, which is above all of these algorithms. Um, and I think where it could possibly go for the range. And um, yeah, so if you have a, a smaller uh, account, gold is something that can be really great to trade. Let's see here where it is the option chain, bada bing. Okay, so for gold, um, I would recommend getting it at the 1550 um, rather than the 16, because you're just gonna have a way bigger Delta, which it moving along in your favor is going to make you a lot more money rather than, you know, eight cents uh, buying it in. You'd have to buy a ton of contracts of this for it to like actually make any cheddar because like two ticks up and you're up like 20%, but that's only $2. So, um, that's why I would recommend buying it in the money for this one. Moving on to AR for puts, I am going to recommend the 26 because you're pretty much buying it at the money. And then the moment that it goes into the money, you'll get that intrinsic value. Um, your, your deltas will be nice and fat. And I really like the way the AR looks, to be honest, because we are continuing this motion down. We did... We were looking at it for the small caps yesterday to break to the upside and come test some things out up here. It just did it in the pre-market, started up at the top, right at price targets, and then just continued to come down all day. So if that movement does continue, then we could test out these lows over here. Some of these are very easy to see. The bottom of the day here, the bottom of the day here, the bottom of the day here. So those are really easy ones to see. But then I did zoom into the 30 minutes to kind of find that in between here and here. And that came from this spot right here, the bottom of this two, where you can see we were going up, swung low, stopped right here, and then continued to go back on up again. So next time we come down to this area, we're going to have to make it through this. Okay. Um, awesome. Then we're going to move on to DocuSign. DocuSign is actually something that I, I am kind of looking forward to, to be honest. Um, DocuSign has so close to being one of my favorites. It is a, a 2 1 2 2 reversal that's forming. I wish it was more of a failed two, but the spinning top is still showing me what? Momentum change, right? Um, we did push up immediately fell during that day, right? Like pushed up the pre-market fell all day. Then we continue to push up and now we just don't have the strength. And it looks like we're losing steam to the upside and we might want to come back down and start testing out these lows. Now there is a large range here. So that is why there's a lot more price targets because of that simple fact. Moving into the 30 minute time frame, we can start seeing where these are going to come from. Bang right in here where all of this it's kind of like hitting a wall coming to the downside. So next time we come down here, we're going to have to make it through this spot. After that, we'll come test out the bottom of this too, where all of this is having a, a hard time getting beneath. And this is like 90 minutes of having a hard time getting beneath it. Then we'll come test out the low of here, which is the low of uh, this swing low. Then there's the bottom of the one, which was on the daily. After that, and in between that and the bottom of the failed two is this three right in here because most threes do have an algorithm um, on, on both sides of it. With DocuSign, I am looking at the 5750. This is, I think, going to be really nice because you're going to get in the money by the time that you hit PT1, and it's got a great delta that matches a really inexpensive price. So I like that. Moving on to XOM. Now, this bad boy just looks great, right? We've just been 
after we got out of this zone out here, we chose a direction. We just zoomed up to the top and then we broke the high and then immediately started selling off. So if that continues tomorrow, then we could test out the previous low of the day and even a little bit more beyond that just because of its range, right? If this is its range for the day and we start off, you know, right where it opens. And as you can see, we're really close to hitting everything that is given as a price target. Moving on to the 30 minute time frame to start things off. And it's not always that we do things on the 30 minute, but that's just where I like to start. You can see that this is sort of a classic case of steps, meaning it's just like pivot points along the way. First one's gonna be in here, but check this out. When I put this bad boy on, what do you see? All of this having trouble, right? So we can't ignore that. Then we're gonna test this one right in here, which you can see all of this is wicking off, but look at how over here, it's wicking to the bottom. Like it can't get above it. Oh, I tried, oh, I tried. Ooh, I tried. And then finally, and then the next time we got back down to this area, they're protecting their positions and they're keeping it to the upside. So that'll be the next spot that we'll fight. Then it'll be the bottom of this fail too, which all of this is still chopping through, wicking through, wicking through, wicking through, wicking through, wicking through, finally breaking, but then wicking through to the top side before breaking all the way up. So there's a lot of algorithms in here. I, that we're going to have to make some pit stops at. Then we'll test the bottom of this one, which all of these come and just Dink, 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 just bounce a ride off of it as well. And then there is the low of this one, which, as I just showed, is about the max of what its range it could do. So XOM, actually really excited for. 108 strike price is what I'm looking at. Inexpensive price, super fat delta. Love it. Then we're going to go on to coin. Now, coin, I'm suggesting a farther out strike price on. And the reason why is because it's just pretty darn expensive, right? It's pretty damn expensive. So moving to all, I'm going to suggest buying around the 270. And that 270, if you look over here, it's more affordable, but it actually still has a great delta. You know, a 29 delta, I'm totally fine with, right? And spending about 500 bucks for it, that's to me a lot better than spending $1,100 for a 51 delta. See what I'm saying? So I think that the uh, the place that I'm going to be looking at the shop is farther out of the money here, which it absolutely has the range to cover and do from entry to the final PT is like $11. So you will watch that Delta roll over plenty of times. The gamma will keep feeding it as it keeps going in your directions and you'll, you'll make a lot of money on it. Um, without having to buy at the money because those Greeks are good on it still farther out. And we're purchasing it in a place that we have the opportunity to get in the money as opposed to getting it at like 300. Well, we're, we're not hitting 300 probably tomorrow. And watch, we do, right? We, we, we hit 300 tomorrow. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that that's what I'm looking at for uh, for coin as far as the strike price goes and why it's a little bit different than uh, normal. And I am being a little bit conservative with the price targets as well. So let's talk about it. There is this, which is at the top of the 30 minute, right? Where you can see that these things have a hard time getting through the top of this too, where all of this is chopping through and having a hard time getting through the high of the day. But because there is a $5 range between entry and PT1 that I originally had, I zoomed in and I zoomed into the five minute because I wanted to see, hey, that that is a big range. Are there any other little points that we could stop at? Or is it just one massive candle from some volume that came in? And no, if we actually look, there are some wicks on these candles. So we were trying to go up, stop, trying to go up stopped so what's going to happen when we get back to these areas well we just are going to test them out and you know what even though it looks like it's really close it's two dollars it's two dollars before this early pt you'll make plenty of money in that meantime you'll be able to move your stop losses and the profit you'll be able to protect your positions after here we'll test this one and then onto the other price targets that i had already mentioned from the 30 minute um coin looks really good Hopefully it continues to, to move and we can all make a little bit of money with Roger tomorrow, who's been killing it with coin. All right. After that is going to be AMD. AMD is something that looks really great, especially because it took out um, 
its weekly PT that was given. You can see its weekly entry was right here. Weekly PT one was here. It did its thing in two days. Broke entry yesterday, took out PT one today, immediately rejected it and started going to the upside, which tells us what? Well, maybe we're done. Maybe this algorithm got filled. We're good. These people here are, are protecting their positions so hard that they're completely shifting the direction that it was going in. If that continues, then we will test the high of the previous day's high. I, I hate that it's so close, but it is what it is. We're going to have to test that. And after that, then we'll test out this day's high. Because if you look, this three came and kind of bounced right off of it. It was really, really close. And most threes have algorithms on both sides of it. So that'll be where we test out. And then beyond that, going into the 30 minute time frame, you can see where here and here are the next potential price targets. Here being, if you look where the downside of these candles have a hard time getting past and here being where the upside of these candles and downside of these candles have a hard time getting past. This is about an $8 range. So really, really nice. And uh, you should be able to make some really great money on AMD tomorrow if it does its thing. Let's talk about strike prices. Now, personally, I'm okay with spending this on my AMDs. Um, this is within like my comfortability. However, maybe not for everybody. And if it's not, then I would suggest getting the 210. The 210, you have a chance to be in the money and you have a decent sized delta, which is the most important thing. Your delta needs to be feeding your premiums. If you have a, a really small delta, then with the movement that happens, you just don't make very much money and it makes it hard to build it back up if it starts going the wrong direction on you. So AMD, really like this one. Here is where I'll probably be shopping. Here is the next place I suggest. And of course, you can get in between that as well. That's where your comfortability level is. Moving on to Apple, which in yesterday's video, we talked about the trend line um, coming and testing that because I even said, like, I don't think that we're going to come test all the way to the bottom of this thing. I think that we'll come around to where the trend line is and we'll see what happens. And wouldn't you know it? Which you know, we bounce right off of it, giving ourselves a fail too. Now, it's not the juiciest fail too because it is more of a uh, of a pin bar, right? It does have a, a nice wick on the top of it. But if it continues to go in this direction, then it does look really good to test out the top of this high right in here, which is, of course, yesterday's uh, high, I believe. Then the top of this one, where all of this is chopping through. Then the top of this two, where you can see these candles are all getting stuck at. And then the top of the one, and I don't want to get greedy and really go beyond that. But for for anybody watching, you know, if Apple just is super parabolic tomorrow, then it really does have the opportunity to come test out all the way up here at uh, 106.89 to just be completely transparent. Um, however, I'm just not trying to be like super greedy on Apple to make that bullish of a movement. Um, remember, you don't ever have to capture the full movement of anything. You just got to take bites out of it along the way, and you're a profitable trader. Um, so, yeah, Apple, that's what I'm looking at for that. I am going to suggest the 175 strike. Pretty inexpensive as far as premiums goes. It's got a decent delta on it as well. And wouldn't you, isn't it funny that, like, the one that's at the money here is, like, 31 and things like coin. We go, like, five strike prices out of the money, and it's 29 so that's why it's important to look at the Greeks when you're shopping for your contracts, because sometimes out of the money doesn't work and sometimes it does. Um, and obviously here, if we were to go farther out of the money, this wouldn't work. Three cents. Like, what are we doing? Like, I want to make money. Do you want to make money? Because if I'm making three dollars for every dollar movement, I don't really feel like I'm making money. All right. Beyond that. We are going to end things off with Tesla, which I played both ways today. Uh, please check out the previous video that was uh, just posted so you can see how I played this for both calls and puts. Uh, we've been waiting on Tesla. I've had Tesla on the watches for like, what, freaking three or four days now. Um, had it on here, had it on here, had it on here, and now I got it on again. Ah. <laughs> so 
Finally, it broke its entry, did its thing for puts, took out that PT to the penny, and then it is giving the energy that it wants to go back up, right? And so let's take a look at this. Who has more control of this candle, right? Well, this wick on the bottom side shares that this is where buyers are, right? And then the wick on the top side, back to where it's closing, shows that this is where the sellers have control. So who has more control of this candle? The buyers do, right? And if the buyers have more control of today's candle and they continue that dominance into tomorrow, then we could see it test out things on the 30 minute coming from the top of this candle right here, the top of the day. And then I did zoom in to the five minute because Tesla does have a pretty big range and I wanted to be able to see where are the actual points of contention along the way. Right here is this early PT because my goodness, look at how choppy we are through here, right? It is much closer than I want it to be, but you will make some money still off of a, a 50 cent movement. If we can get past this choppy area, we'll test the top of the choppy area. Then we can go on to test the top of this where all of this is chopping through and then beyond that, the high of the day. And that is a nice like three, $4 movement. Yes, Tesla can move way beyond that. But I'm not trying to get greedy because as we can see, we have been a little sideways through this area for the last few days. So I don't want to be like, oh, yeah, we're definitely going to go all the way up to 191 after this. Well, maybe we do. Maybe we don't. Right. I just want to be able to make some money along the way. And this is what I see is more probable than filling the gap tomorrow, per se. And with that being said, I am going to suggest the 180 strike price rate delta rate price for tesla and that's because we have less days in the week to expiration where now the at the money contracts for something like tesla become a bit more affordable um and where i would suggest getting it at um if this is not tickling your fancy the 8250 as long as it hits the final price target will be in the money and you'll see great gains from that and a 29 delta is nothing to scoff i like it i like it i like it so these are the two that I would suggest. Um, awesome. Uh, hope everybody makes some money tomorrow. And I can't wait to see y'all's wins. I can't wait to talk about everything and uh, just continue to grow with each and every one of you. God bless. And I will see you soon.